In this video, we're going to take the data that we acquired during the density of the penny activity, and we're going to place it into a Google Sheets document, and then use that data to be able to create a graph, and then create a trend line using that graph. So this is what we will eventually end up with, but uh, in the meantime, I want to show you what it's going to look like in developing that. So the first thing that we're going to do is get our data into the Excel or the Google Sheets spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on a new sheet, and I'm going to ask that when you turn this in, we're going to end up going to the library and printing it out. When you turn this in, that you're going to make sure that everything fits on one page. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the title in, density of a penny. And then um, over on the right side, I'll put my uh, name, a spot for my name. Uh, Mr. Hodges, and then I'm going to change the uh, size of that so that it's a little bit bigger. So we can click up there and change the size. So then the first thing that I'm going to do is take my data and type it into the Excel, I keep calling it Excel, I apologize, into the Google Sheets document. So a couple things on the formatting of the Google Sheets document. First off, the most important thing at the beginning is we always talk about including units in our data. However, if we include units here as we go down, um, the program will not recognize this as being a number. And so it will give us issues. So in science, Whenever we have a data table, we are allowed to put the name of the variable at the top, and then in parentheses, we put the units. And that allows us not to be required to put the units all the way down. So the first thing that I want you to notice is the units are listed at the top, but they're not listed in each individual cell, and that is very important. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to be read to the nearest tenth. And the reason I need to have it measured to the, or read to the nearest tenth is my graduated cylinder that I used is designed to read to the nearest tenth. So when I put this data in, even if it's a point zero, we need to have it listed as point zero. The way I did that is I click on the first cell. I keep the mouse click down and I drag down and it highlights the entire section and then I can change how many decimal points I want this represented to. The second thing is this set of data, so I click once, hold it down and drag down. This set of data is from the quad beam balance, the variable is mass and the units are grams. And this one is supposed to be to the thousands place, so I want to make sure those are all to the thousands place, and they are. Then I want to make it look clean. And the way that I make it look clean, when you first type your data in, it'll look like this. The way that I make it look clean is I click on the first one, and maybe I include the volume also and I drag down and across so that everything's highlighted and then I click on this box that says borders and then I click on all borders and then it makes a nice all borders around that. I also want to make sure that it's centered so I click on the first highlight all of it and then I go up here and click on the middle so that it's all centered. Now here when I originally type in my um, pre-1982 pennies, there is a way to center it across two cells. So when you originally type in pre-1982 pennies, you can see that it's listed over on the left side. If we click on this first cell and then drag it over to highlight both cells, we can click on this 
icon that says merge cells, the down arrow, and then we say merge horizontally and it merges all those cells. It centers it across the two cells. So if I click on it again, I can click on the bold. That makes it look good. And then also click and drag and make those bold. Now it looks very professional in terms of my data table. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make a graph using this data. In order to graph this data, I'm not going to include the titles because that confuses the computer program. I'm going to click on the 2.0 and drag down diagonal so that all of the data is highlighted. One thing that I want you to notice too is I've placed volume first and mass second. That is important. You need to have volume listed first and mass second with the way that this will interpret the X and the Y axis. The X axis is the first one listed, the Y axis is the second one listed. And because of the equation we will be using, we want to have it volume first, mass second. I click, once I highlight all of that, I click on insert and I'm going to insert a chart. Then this graph shows up. The chart type, I got lucky, it chose scatter chart. That is the one that we want. Sometimes it could choose a bar chart or an area chart or a line chart. We want a scatter plot and so hopefully that's the one that is chosen for you. Then there's a couple things that we want to make sure that we include on this chart. The first is the mass in grams, that's fantastic, the y-axis. The volume in milliliters, that's fantastic, the x-axis. Then I'm going to change, so I double click on the title. I'm going to call this my pre-1982 pennies. We want to make sure we have this chart labeled as the pre-1982 pennies. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it. And once it's highlighted, I can drag it up so that it's next to the data. Because down below, we'll put the post-1982 pennies with the data or the graph next to it. Then, when we do our print preview, we'll make sure all of it is on one chart. So, I'm gonna, once I moved it, notice this side section was gone to be able to edit the chart. So, I'm going to click on the chart so that it's highlighted. I'm going to click on the three dots and I want to edit the chart. So we're going to make some adjustments to this chart. One of the excellent benefits of Google Sheet is it will automatically create the best fit trend line through this data. So it will automatically take each one of these X and Y axes and be able to and be able to draw a line through this data that is a best fit line and then it automatically creates a trend line for us. So notice at the top we have setup and we have customize. What we're going to do is click on customize there are several things that you can customize here, the type of dots that are used and chart titles. We've already double clicked on the chart title to fix that. For the trend line, I'm going to click on series and I'm going to scroll down to click on trend line. Once I click on trend line, it gives me some options. In looking at the options underneath clicking on trend line, I clicked on customized and then I clicked on trend line. I'm going to first make a label or click on label. And when I click on label, it allows me to choose use equation. So I'm going to click on use equation and then all of a sudden this equation shows up. I wish instead of having the dot here, it had the variable y. 
because this should be y equals 8.84x plus negative 8.35. It should be in the form of y equals mx plus b, where y is the variable mass, x is the variable volume, the 8.84, it's very important to understand, that is your slope, your rise over your run. Y equals MX plus B, and this B value is your um, Y intercept. So Y equals MX plus B. So now, we have our equation relating the mass in grams, y, to the volume of, in milliliters, x. So y equals mx plus b, but there's no way to change this dot into a y. So now, going back to that equation. The other thing that I want to ask you to add, once we add the trend line in, is I want you to add the R squared value. The idea of R squared is it allows you to know how closely this trend line represents your data. So I'm going to click on R squared, and they put R squared equals 0.897. I wish they didn't put it immediately after the equation, but once again, we can't, we can't change that, so it just is going to be there. The closer R squared is to 1.0, the closer this line represents this data. The further R squared is away, to 1.0, let's say the less that it is, the less that this line represents this data. So we have approximately an R squared value of 0.9. Anything above 0.9 or above says that your data that you took is represented really well by this trend line. So we know that this trend line here represents our data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here and I'm going to write my equation as y equals, and then it's m, we know it's m uh, times x plus b, where m is our slope, b is our y-intercept, and our equation states y equals 8.84 times x plus 8, negative 8.35. So that is our trend line, and I'm going to make that in a bigger font so that I can see it. So now the idea is we need to interpret this equation. I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to go up to borders. I'm going to choose just one border around it, and I'm going to make it thick because that's my equation. So I want us to evaluate this y equals mx plus b. We know that m is the slope, so the slope is 8.84. So let's analyze what that slope is of this line. We've learned that slope is the rise over the run, how much you go up in terms of the y-axis to how much you go over in terms of the x-axis. So let's analyze what the y-axis is. The rise is our mass in grams, and the run is the volume in milliliters. So if I am looking at the rise over the run, what I'm looking at is the mass over the volume. Well, we know something about mass over volume. We know that mass over volume is actually the density from our equations that we've been using. Density is equal to mass over volume. 
So what we just did during this lab, taking five pennies at a time, is calculated the best that we could the density of the pre-1982 pennies by looking at the best fit line, and not just the best fit line, but specifically the slope of the best fit line in terms of rise over run. So what we can say now is the density of this pre-1982 penny should be very, very close to 8.84 grams per milliliter. And now we could look up what the actual density of a pre-1982 penny is and be able to know how closely we were to calculating the correct value of a pre-1982 penny. Now, when I go online to look up the actual density of a pre-1982 penny, the actual density of a pre-1982 penny is 8.96 grams per milliliter. Now, in order to find out our percent error, it will probably be difficult to see this, but this is a sheet that I will be handing out to you, and it looks like it's uh, showing up reverse. But the pre-1982 penny 8.96, what I calculated in my lab, 8.84, I'm going to calculate my percent error with this equation. I'm taking the accepted value, I'm subtracting the experimental value, and I'm dividing by my accepted value. And then I'm taking the whole thing and I am multiplying that by 100. Now, my accepted value is the 8.96. And in this case, my experimental value is 8.84 because that came from my experiment. So, I can in one cell put percent error, and then in another cell, I can put an equal sign. And as soon as I put an equal sign, the Google Sheets knows it's getting ready for an equation. So I'm going to go equals 8.96, but remember, I can't put any units in here, otherwise it doesn't understand it. 8.96, subtract my experimental value which is 8.84. Then I'm going to divide by my accepted value of 8.96. And then I'm going to multiply this whole equation by 100. And that gives me a percent error of 1.33. And you can see, once I click on this cell, it shows up here, 8.96, which is my accepted value, the actual value. And I just saw this typo here, the actual value. is 8.96, subtract what I found in my lab, and then divide it by 8.96. It looks like when I subtract here, I'm going to end up with to the hundredths place. And then I'm going to have two sig figs when I divide, so it only looks like I can use two sig figs. So I'm going to change this so that it only goes to two sig figs. So 1.3 is the percentage. And if I want, I can click on that cell and I can center it. 
So my percent error that I will want to put a box around is 1.3%. Now, I made up this data here um, just for this example. So we're looking for anything under 10% would be a, a good value. We're going to do this for pre-1982, all of this information. Right below it, we're going to do the same thing for post-1982. And then we're going to uh, click on print to see how it's looking. So I want to, and it looks like with the amount of data we have, we will let's uh, set it up so that one page is our pre-1982 data, just like this. And then another page is our post-1982 data. Earlier in the video, I said, let's get it all on one page. But with the amount of information that we have, we probably want to um, just put one page for pre-1982 and one page for post-1982. And we can print those uh, in our uh, library. Um, I hope this helps in understanding how to put the data into Google Sheets how to create a graph, a scatter graph, how to create an equation using the scatter graph, as well as the R squared value, letting us know how good our data is in being represented by the trend line, or I guess how good the trend line in is, is representing our data, as well as extracting the equation Y equals MX plus B understanding that this slope is the rise over the run, which is just our density, and then comparing the density we got, our experimental value, to the actual value. Now, I will tell you that when you do this for the post, you're going to need the actual post-1982 uh, penny density, and you can look this up, but when I looked it up, it comes out to 7.2 grams per milliliter, 7.2 grams per milliliter. I hope this helps in understanding Google Sheets and being able to create a graph using Google Sheets.